third and final day at Indo-Pacific 2023 in Australia. BAE system is showcasing the Norca decoy system. This model is in a full scale and it's basically a rocket, hovering rocket with an EW electronic warfare payload that shoots out of the ship and then flies away from the ship as the, at a similar speed of uh, the vessel to lure the incoming missile away from the vessel. Uh, it's fitted on board approximately 150 surface combatants of the US Navy and Royal Australian Navy. Uh, it's uh, designed by uh, BAE Systems Australia. They are the prime contractor for this. It's fitted with a rocket motor engine uh, with a thrust vectoring system. So when it comes out of the, of the ship, uh, it's in a vertical position and then it goes away from the vessel. Uh, the four antennas at the top are actually uh, stabilization uh, systems. And uh, yeah, it's pretty unique. Uh, not very many navies are using it. Again, it's exclusively the, the, the Royal Australian Navy and the, and the US Navy, but uh, it's said to be a very effective system to uh, protect vessels against uh, incoming uh, anti-ship missiles. NOLCA is going to be fitted on the Hunter-class next generation frigate of the Royal Australian Navy. Four launchers of four rockets each. Two forward on uh, either side of the main mast and two more launchers on top of the helicopter hangar. Circle of the US is showcasing their defiant MUSV, medium-sized USV. Uh, this is part of the US DARPA program known as NOMARS. Uh, we covered it last year at uh, CR Space, uh, the big event in, in the US. Uh, what is new here, however, uh, they are showing the USV fitted with uh, missile launchers. So this is the adaptable deck launcher by BA system and behind it is a container. Looks like the Mark 70 uh, payload delivery system. Uh, on their, their booth they are also showing a video by DARPA showing uh, the Defiant, a number of Defiants uh, acting as a loyal uh, wingman to a uh, US Navy destroyer. Uh, and protecting the destroyer from incoming uh, anti-ship missiles. They are showcasing it here uh, as part of uh, like DARPA exportable system uh, because as part of AUKUS, uh, this could be shared with uh, both uh, Australia and, uh, and the UK. A company representative told me that uh, this entered uh, production two months ago at a small shipyard in the US. Uh, they will uh, launch it uh, at the end of next year and then they will enter a three-month uh, testing phase in 2025. I'm now in the Rheinmetall Australia booth. Uh, the company earlier this year received a contract award to de deliver a new sea mine capability to the Royal Australian Navy as part of the C2000 program. But what is new at the show this year, Indo-Pacific 2023, is that for the first time they're showcasing this mine rail deployment system. To find out more, uh, I'm meeting with uh, Oscar from uh, Supershock Defense Technologies. Oscar, good morning. Good morning, Xavier. Thank you, uh, thank you for coming over and had, having a look at, at the MRDS. The MRDS is a mine rail deployment system. We're very proud to be partnering with Rheinmetall Defence Australia, RWM Italia, um, in a technology, a sovereign technology built here in Australia, designed and built here in Australia, that will enable and improve mine rail efficiency worldwide on fully scalable platforms. The system has um, automation, um, is um, completely scalable and optimizes deck space. Can it be containerized and uh, fitted on the vessels of opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. The system is very compact and one of the key technologies is now that during the mine rail um, deployment, the racks will be maintained, so we will not be uh, wasting the racks and, and, and obviously creating extra signature. The mine rail deployment system, you can see, has a computer which, uh, which senses the mines and positions the mines. The other thing that the system does is has automation, um, and the automation now takes away from any manual deployment. The ability to be able to accurately position the mines, um, understanding the centre of gravity, understanding exactly where they will be deployed and, and also feedback to, to the um, computer in the, um, in the, from the mine rail 
system back to um, the uh, the vessel and um, be able to conduct uh, to create a sea map of the mine. So yeah, the plan is to have the first um, uh, first system in May at testing at Waterhen here um, in um, in Sydney. There are several uncrewed systems on display at Indo-Pacific 2023 this year. In this section you see a number of drone systems that all took part one way or another to uh, Autonomous Warrior, uh, the unmanned systems exercise uh, which took place uh, for two weeks uh, until uh, last week in Jervis Bay, uh, south of uh, Sydney. So this is C2 Robotics, they are showcasing the spare tooth. Uh, it's an Australian company, Australian design and build. Uh, we covered it at uh, Indo-Pacific last year, uh, so it's a large displacement UUV, very, very modular. They're showcasing this new scale model, so two of the LUUVs can fit in a 20 feet container, uh, and the modularity is illustrated by this uh, scale model. So different payloads uh, may be fitted on the UUVs for uh, all sorts of missions, mine warfare, ISR. Uh, potentially uh, anti-submarine warfare, I'm not sure, they, uh, they don't really discuss the, the, the mission sets. And uh, to get more range, uh, an additional battery pack can be fitted on the uh, spare tooth. Uh, that gives uh, several thousand kilometers of range to the LUUVs. Uh, the container is just designed so that it's, uh, it can be easily moved uh, Across, across the country. It's not necessarily meant to be deployed from uh, surface vessels because it comes with uh, so much range. Uh, it's really designed to be uh, deployed from uh, port facilities. Behind me is the EMAPS, environmentally powered uh, modular autonomous, autonomous platform system by uh, Gibson Cox Australia. So it's an USV. It's powered by uh, several sources. As you can see, there are a couple of cells, so it can be wind powered. There are solar panels on the cells, so it can be sun powered. And I was explained, so it's fitted with propellers. Uh, however, they can turn off those propellers, and when it's powered by the wind, uh, those uh, propellers actually generate power, like on a dam, if you like, and that can uh, feed uh, power to the USB. The mission sets include ISR, but also uh, data and communication relays, for example. Uh, this USB can uh, retrieve data from uh, seabed sensors and uh, process them and send them up uh, via satellite communication or uh, radio communication. This is the Huggin Edge by uh, Kongsberg. This is the latest variant of the Huggin autonomous underwater vessel. It comes with several mission sets, uh, such as uh, seabed mapping. It can also conduct uh, seabed warfare uh, operations. Next to it is the Oracle 25 USB. It's an Australian project. Uh, it's set to uh, hit the water to be launched uh, next year. Uh, and uh, I was told uh, it's going to be pretty much like a Royal Wigman vessel, uh, basically uh, assisting and uh, escorting uh, crewed surface vessels. The last system being showcased in this area is the cell drone Voyager. So that's the larger uh, cell drone USV uh, by cell drone, the, the, the company. It took part in uh, Autonomous Warrior uh, last week. Uh, it's used currently by the US Navy in the 4th and 5th Fleet, as well as by the US Coast Guard 